Good morning. Waking up with watches, specifically waking up with the Galaxy Watch 4 by Samsung. Whoop, there we go. And also the Venue 2 by Garmin. Let's take a look at kind of my morning routine with these watches if there is if there really is a routine. Anyway, it'll make sense. When you first wake up in the morning, you'll notice that it doesn't turn on. Everything's kind of in bedtime mode. Now if you don't turn this off, it'll automatically turn off per settings on your phone. And my phone is also in bedtime mode. This is the Galaxy Z Flip 3 that came out in 2021. So if I swipe down and if I turn off bedtime mode here, my phone goes back into color and then that would communicate with my watch and turn it off. However, to conserve battery life, I put my Galaxy Watch into airplane mode. It maybe saves a percent or two, it's not a big deal. So now if I turn airplane mode off, it should synchronize with the phone and automatically turn off bedtime mode, should, being the operative word. Sometimes you have to synchronize or force a sync. Let's see if that will do it. Yeah, this has been happening more often than not where it just doesn't connect. The other thing, part of the routine is when you're on just the watch and you go to check your sleep in the morning, you get a generic sleep. You don't get this and it tells you to connect. So before I could show you that, it automatically, there we go. And there's my sleep coaching reminder. Check last night's sleep, view sleep record, blip. There we go, sleep score 70, not too bad. 551 calories burned, minimum oxygen 79, and then what's missing here is it's not showing me my heart rate, and Samsung needs to do that. So seven hours and 48 minutes last night, we have two segments, so it looks like I was up getting a drink of water or something something. So we have 2134 to 2315, and then 2331 to, oh yeah, I was uh, watching Better Call Saul. <laughs> uh, sleep stages, minimum, no snoring data. I, I'm gonna give that a three. I woke up a lot last night. Light sleep, four hours and 10 minutes, yikes. And then here's the sleep coaching aspect. Let's see what today is. Five minute tip for sleep. How's your coaching going? Have you learned a lot about sleep in the past six days? Oh, thanks. Yes, I have. Boom. And yesterday's tip, I think I need to, oh. Do you think you can complete coaching and improve your sleep? Yes, yes I do. Take a moment and try your best to improve your habits. I'll let you pause and read that if you like. And then I missed one for this day. I think I have to watch a video. Let's see what the video says. Oh, it's showing how to make a balanced breakfast. Energize at night, sleepy during the day. Oh, it's talking about the 24-hour sleep cycle. We fall asleep and wake up at similar times every day according to a set cycle, circadian rhythm. Yeah, pay attention to your circadian rhythm. They can't sleep when they want, feel sleepy when they're awake, and they feel tired no matter how much they sleep. People who are active at night, okay. For evening types, their circadian rhythm doesn't match the wake-up times and bedtimes that are required by society. So you need to find your circadian rhythm. Well done. Samsung. And your body and mind must be fully relaxed in order to sleep. That was nice. Imagine you're standing on the tracks as a train is approaching. Your heart will start racing. Your blood pressure will rise and your breathing will become more rapid and you'll feel anxiety or fear. In a situation where you're actually in danger, these psychological changes are necessary for survival. But if you're consumed by anxiety or tension when there's no real danger, it's impossible for you to relax and feel comfortable. Our bodies must be fully relaxed when we're sleeping, which is when our bodies get the most rest. In contrast to when you're awake during your daily life, full relaxation is when your muscles aren't tense, your heartbeat is slow and your blood pressure is low. Relaxation methods or meditation, which help relax our bodies are helpful, making us fall asleep. And turning off gadgets. 
And the first mission, which was that? You have to be sleepy in order to sleep. Okay. So it's saying no to caffeine apparently, which I agree. I haven't had caffeine for over a week now. It's been nice. If you have too many snacks, you will be will you be able to eat your dinner? In the same way, if you sleep anytime you want, your desire to sleep won't be very high at bedtime. It takes time for your desire to sleep to grow and you won't be able to sleep right when you want to. To sleep well at night, you need to stop taking naps and try to avoid sleeping in. Dozing will also reduce your desire to sleep. If you feel too sleepy, it's okay to take a nap for 30 minutes. I agree. Long naps really screw me up. There we go. So my first week is done for sleep coaching. Yay! I'm all caught up. So coaching schedule. Week one, discover three sleep factors. Week two, relax before bed. Week three, get out of bed quickly. Week four, relax before bed review. Very nice. Powered by the Samsung Medical Center. Well, that's good info. Well, let's take a look at the stats. For some reason this didn't turn off, so I'll just turn off automatically. And then I often go into settings and just to like really make sure my watch doesn't wake me up, I make sure I turn off raise to wake, touch screen, touch bezel. And yeah, I was also trying to save battery. So now I can turn all that on. And then as far as Garmin, you don't really have to do anything. It'll automatically pop out of the mode. It doesn't connect to the Android phone when you're taking it in and out of do not disturb mode. So you have to manually do that or just wait for the window to open. And then if you swipe up, the sleep stats are automatically shown on the watch. You don't have to connect. Ooh, sleep score of 61, 23. Okay, yeah, it missed my late evening app nap. Okay, a little different, but not too off from Samsung. Short, but deep sleep. Your sleep was too short, but you had good sleep. And then, of course, if we look on the app, it gives us more details. There's our sleep score. One hour, six minutes, three hours and 50 minutes. The Pulse OX is right, wow, minimum 79. That's not good. Average 93. Yeah, it did dip down to the low 80s, but according to Garmin, it didn't drop down into the 70s. And then there's also respiration that it tracks. Hmm, interesting. It's missing the heart rate data on here as well. So you have to go back to the main screen, open up heart rate, and then you can see your heart rate during the night. Oh, and then right here I did a health snapshot when I first woke up. So 80, yeah, I don't know what's going on. I've been stressed lately. So right there, 67, 68. Yeah, my resting heart rate's kind of high. Usually it's down to 59 and it tracks all that. So there's seven day, 60s. Yeah, it was last Friday on March 4th, it was 59. It's usually at 59, 58. So maybe I'm getting sick. The heart rate data on Samsung, it's okay. I would like it to be a little more like Garmin. I just like the format and the readability and the fact that it takes a long time to load. So 53 to 106, and then you see right here where it has all the little breakdowns of time frames of when it was tracking your heart rate. So according to this, my heart rate is down to 54. Which one is right? That's the question. To be honest, I trust Garmin a little more just because this is a newer technology where this one is almost a full year old now. Hmm. Hmm. There you go. That's what it's like waking up with Galaxy versus Garmin. And as far as the other watches, I also was testing Garmin versus Phoenix, and it's about the same. This has do not disturb mode, but it also has sleep mode, which is actually quite nice. They both have battery saver mode. Well, we'll get to that. Oh, time to get moving, puppy. What does that mean? Gotta walk around the house. Okay, I've walked at least 60 steps and it still prompted me to move more. It's been almost an hour. Try some stretches or a walk. Still walking around the house. I get this a couple times a day because I do computer work and it just, yeah, I don't know what to say. So I don't want to ruin that thing on the screen so I can connect the watch 
5,368. Apparently that's not enough. Okay, so I close the app. We'll open it again. There we go. A whole nother hundred stuff. It just doesn't turn off. That's so weird. I don't know what to say, Samsung. Maybe this is a bug. I checked the app for updates and there are no updates at this time, but hey, it got me moving a good 300 steps, so that's good. Ignore all this other stuff, that's just for another test. Another day with the Galaxy and another day with the Garmin. Let me show you what's going on. Had to take off the Samsung to charge it and had to go grocery shopping, I left the Z Fold behind, so I think the step count's gonna be off, but it lasted a whopping one day and five hours. It has four minutes till full, but once you unplug it, then you lose that data. Usage since last ran around, and then if we click on the battery icon, one day and 20 hours left. It did say two days, do you see that? Just, just for a minute, and then it went away. And now I could put it into power saving mode, and then it would last two days and four hours, whereas, this watch is going strong with six days left, 79%. And I fully charged them Sunday morning. So they went all day Sunday, all day Monday. It's now 17, 16, yep. And there you go. So basically this means that by the time you have to charge the Garmin again, and we're talking about this one, the Garmin Venue 2 Plus, the V2P, you'd need to charge the Galaxy Watch about three times. More like four times. Yikes. Very different watches, but the price point's about the same. I am still quantifying the differences, and there are a lot. A lot. When I mean a lot, I mean a lot, a lot. A lot of differences. Besides just the fact that one's Garmin and one is Samsung. The other funny thing is, not only have I been reviewing the Garmin Venue 2 Plus two weeks ago, actually for the last three weeks, I've been reviewing the Garmin Venue 2. So now we have a really unique perspective because we have both versions of the Venue all stacked up against the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic LTE. Now neither of these two watches, I would show you both, but I only have the Venue 2 Plus right now. I'm loaning this one, the Venue 2, to a friend of mine. Two to a friend. Ha <laughs> that was funny. So two days and four hours left. This is one thing that's really cool. I can modify the settings between the two watches. This is one thing Garmin can't do. Whether you have your Garmin connected to an Android phone, like this Z Flip 3, or an iPhone, or if you have a Phoenix connected to either Android or Apple, it, it doesn't matter. If I put the Garmin watch in the do not disturb mode, the phone doesn't follow and vice versa. That's a big difference. Whereas when you have a Samsung paired to a Samsung, they communicate beautifully and one mode mimics the other, which is really nice. Very similar to an Apple watch. And maybe one day Garmin will have that access between the watch and the phone, but right now it does not. So what are some other big differences? So the amount of differences are many. Uh, I actually need to get the Venue 2 back from my friend Greg before I can wrap all that up because there are a couple subtle ones that I can't remember and I don't wanna burn myself. I've done that before in videos where I say something and then someone comments like, oh, you're wrong. So I wanna do my research. But the list is up to 40 different differences. There's your, there's your sneak peek. And yeah, some are really minute, you know, like, oh, which one detects naps, which one doesn't. And the other ones are quite huge. And they're kind of not a showstopper, but they're things I really want to communicate because it's gonna affect your buying decision whether you wanna go with Galaxy or Garmin. Now, comparing a Phoenix to the Galaxy Watch, was kind of a moot point and that's why I ordered the venue because they're really similar in the overall functionality and I think who's going to be wearing them but they're still quite different like one of the major differences LTE this one I can make phone calls on without a phone nearby where this one even though the venue 2 plus does have phone mode and you can dial 
you have to have your phone nearby. There's no nano chip inside. However, maybe with the Venue 3 Plus, Garmin might, uh, what's the word, might collaborate with AT&T, Verizon, or T-Mobile and make that happen. So the video you just saw, that was all part of day 29 and 30. Now it's actually almost one in the morning. <laughs> I was up late doing a release night and then my brain was like all wired. So I thought I'd finish that video. The overall stats for the day, oh, they change. They were within a couple hundred of each other. The one thing is this one still thinks my heart rate's a lot lower. And let me quickly show you the rowing workout that I did with both watches. This one's interesting. So on the left is the workout from the Galaxy and on the right is the one from the Garmin Venue 2 Plus. And Garmin even actually logs it right there. We have our heart rate on Galaxy. We have our heart rate zones. <laughs> Great. Workout detail, total time, total calories. You can add notes, images. Okay, that's pretty detailed, right? All right, now let's look at Garmin. We have total time, total total strokes, total, total calories. Okay, well, if we're rowing, that's pretty good to have the number of strokes. And then it logs which watch we had. Okay. Oh, holy cow, look at all these. We have the time, we have the distance, total strokes, strokes per minute, max strokes per minute, total time, minimum, heart rate, moderate, vigorous. Okay, wow. That's pretty detailed. Then we have laps, we have stroke per minute, we have heart rate, time and zones, really detailed. Wow, that's I thought that was pretty impressive. So when you go to hydration, you see how it says 13? It actually increased my number of cups of water that I was supposed to drink in the day because my goal is nine cups. So after that workout, it told me to drink an extra four cups of water. So pretty cool. That is one major hydration tracking difference from the thing. So yes, it does do heart rate on the Galaxy Watch, but not any really detailed specs like the Garmin does with the whole stroke count. And when you're rowing and you're watching the stroke count on your wrist, it's pretty accurate. It's within one. It's really, I don't, I don't know how they do the algorithm, but it's pretty good, so good job, Garmin, good job. So here we have really detailed exercise analysis, but really not that particular to rowing itself, whereas Garmin kind of dives in deeper. There you go. And that's it, that's all I have so far. I'm gonna do just another day, probably, maybe, maybe two more days at most, of Galaxy versus Garmin and then I'll wrap up. By then we'll probably have 42 or 43 major differences. Thanks for watching. Type those pithy comments down below. And yes, let the credits roll for the Paramount Kid. And I will see you again sometime in 88 hours. Had a long weekend, so I think it's, I haven't published for four days now. That's life, right? So I hope you got your seven hours of sleep. Until then, goodbye.